This is a quick mo momentum review, stuff we learned last year. So first off, momentum has a symbol that is a P. It is a vector, which means that the direction matters. And it is equal to mass times velocity, where velocity is also a vector. So that means the direction for momentum is just the same as the direction for velocity. Okay, so um, you can have negative velocity, which means you can have negative momentum. You can have positive velocity or positive momentum. You're going to need to keep track of your directions. You're also going to have to keep your x and your y separate. There's momentum in the x direction and momentum in the y direction. You have to keep, you have to treat them separately. Now, when you change momentum, change momentum, that is called impulse. Whenever you see the word impulse, that means find the change momentum. There's two ways you can find it. Um, actually, let's keep the blue. You could do straight up math. Okay, the change of anything is your final. Um, your final. Wow, I can't even think. Your final. Value <laughs> minus your initial value. Okay, but that's the same for anything. You've done that before. However, there is a mathematical way to find it as well. The change of momentum is equal to the force, or in this case, average force, times time. Okay, now last year we just did force times time because we weren't dealing with variable forces, we were only dealing with constant forces. Now we're going to have forces that can change. They can change based on position, they can change based on time, all kinds of stuff. So we have to put average force here. You know what? I think people usually do not AVE, but AVG average. Okay. Now, because this is AP physics, we're going to add in the what you do if it's a variable force. So Remember when we did work, we said that work was the integral of f of x dx from initial to final position in x. Well, oops, what is happening? I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, um, there must be something going on in a window behind here. Okay, anyways, impulse, same kind of a thing. Um, except for we need to do with t, okay? We could also do, so we could also do the integral of f as a function of t dt from initial t to final t, okay? So that will work as well if you have a, a force that's not constant, okay? And then finally, something we didn't do last year, interestingly enough, is we can define momentum as a different, well, kind of a different thing. It turns out that the net force that you have on an object is equal to the derivative of the momentum as a function of time. Okay? So this is actually, oddly enough, this is actually how Newton first defined that Newton second law thing. He used momentum. He didn't actually use the F equals MA thing. Um, we actually don't use this that much. I just came, that just came to me. We don't use this that much. But it's there um, as long as you use is momentum as a function of time. Okay, so those are these are new this year. No, yay. Um, let's finish off with the stuff we already knew from last year. Okay, if something happens, like you fire a gun or a cannon or something, as long as there are no outside forces, come on, come out, there it goes. As long as there are no outside forces, the total momentum is constant. Okay, total momentum is constant if I guess what you'd say is the net force is zero. That's what we mean by that's what we mean by you no know, outside forces. So for instance if you have a gun, this is the one we used last year, uh, this is how we know that re why we know re uh, uh, wow guns recoil. I had popcorn with cinnamon on it. That was a mistake. I kind of inhaled some. <clears throat> yeah, it's not 
it's not going well. Anyway, uh, let's say we had a gun. You know what? I can't draw a gun. Let's do a cannon. Cannons are easy to draw. I don't know why cannons are easy to draw and guns are hard. Okay. You know, like in the cartoons. Okay, <laughs> we have a cannon. Um, in the beginning, we have the cannon and the ball is inside. Okay, nothing's moving. Nothing's moving at all. So if we added up the momentum of both pieces, we would get a total momentum of zero. Here's the thing. When this fires, okay, it's on wheels, so there's no friction. Well, we're going to pretend there's no friction. We also uh, have only internal forces. Basically, this gunpowder goes off, gas expands, gas pushes on ball, gas pushes on... Um, uh, cannon, but that's all happening inside, so it's not an, an outside net force. So after the cannon fires, okay, boom, <laughs> that happens. Now we've got a cannon without a cannonball in it, and we've got a cannonball. And of course, the point of a cannon is to make a cannonball go. So now this has some sort of momentum. Momentum of, um, I don't know, ball. How about that? Ball. Okay? And it's that way. But because there were no outside forces, I know the total momentum still has to be zero. It has to be. So I need the total momentum to add up to that. I've got this... Um, momentum of the ball is some positive momentum over there, so there must be somewhere an equal and opposite momentum to cancel that out, so when you add them together you still get zero. And there is. There's the cannon. The cannon, that's a bad color, how about green? The cannon must be going, have some velocity backwards so that it has exactly the same momentum as the um, ball, so this is cannon, where the momentum of the cannon is negative momentum of the ball. So that when you add them up, what you get is really this, which is zero, and that's what we want. Okay, so that is why things recoil. Now, notice I said equal and opposite momentum, that does not mean the velocities are the same, because again, remember, linear momentum, the magnitude of which is m times v. So these are the same. Whee! So they'll cancel out. But the cannon has much more mass. So this has more mass. Uh, I don't need an eraser. This has more mass. The cannon, I'm sorry, the cannon has more mass and therefore the recoil velocity of the cannon will be less than the forward velocity of the cannon ball, which is good. Otherwise we would have cannons flying back and people firing them just as fast as the cannonball is going forward and that would be very bad. Um, as it is, people get killed by cannons if they're standing behind them because they get smashed. Okay, let's see, I don't think there's anything else that we learned last year, really, except for collisions, and we're going to do collisions later anyways, and I just want to do those from scratch because we're going to add a whole bunch to them. Okay, so this is end of our review.